That works, ladies and gentlemen, the basics of building an Elm application to do form validation and have some relationships between those field values using stateful Boolean flags. There are many other ways to type things, but the way it works is we have the user data, the fields that they actually type in separate from our data because what the user can type can be invalid, but our data should be sacrosanct and that should be our true source of truth. And so you keep them separate to know if they're valid or not. So what a user can type in is invalid. That way, if it's valid or not, you can show that, well, whatever they typed is invalid and I can hint that they need to fix things. And it keeps your source of truth separate from what the user is actually typing. And that way each individual form field can have its own validation for it. And when you bring that data in Elm, it's very strict about how you decode data, how you bring that data in. And this gives you the opportunity to validate each individual form element or groups of data if a lot of these fields have to do with like creating a person or an address, for example, that's a group relating to that person. Again, the types are what the user can do for those particular things. Each one of our changes to an input triggers a message, and this is just what we can do. Anytime we type, the data model will change. And so this message says, anytime you're typing in Fahrenheit, you're gonna to convert to Celsius. It doesn't mean it'll work, right? It could fail, we, we might not have a number, there, sometimes the user can type the word cow. That's not a float. That's not going to go to a number. It's going to give us nothing back. But if it is valid, then we can do the rest of our logic. And so that message is usually tied to anything the user can do, a form field, a button, a drop down that they choose and select something, a radio button, a checkbox that they toggle on and off, things like that. And so each one of these messages is a capability of the form that they can accomplish. And this is different than submitting the form because as you're typing the data, you're typing it and validating it in real time. You're not typing and then hitting submit and validating. You're actually validating while the user types, but you try not to be obnoxious about it. So like notice how when we start, they don't start in an invalid state. You ever seen those forms when you, as soon as you start typing, they're invalid like that. So you can adjust how that works if you want to be submit, or if you know that the user is still typing, maybe delay it. There's a, a lot of user experience options there. And then down for the bottom here, although we're converting in floats and stuff, we have some flexibility in how we actually display that to the user. So although when they type on input, whatever they type in the field and it immediately starts running our logic, we can still adjust to what actually shows in the field. So although they are typing in the field that we're also modifying in real time, if it's valid, then we can use that source of truth that they're typing and format it as a type. Very similar to when you type phone numbers and it auto adjusts the field to format for you. And then same thing, if it's not legit, we just leave it alone and let the user figure out what they're typing because no user likes when the form field doesn't work the way they think or they type things and they don't see it. I'm sure you've used forms on the web where you've typed and it kind of modifies or just goes nowhere you type and you don't see anything show up. And so this gives us some flexibility there to do that. And then lastly, Anytime we break things, the Elm compiler, you know, with a spelling mistake or, you know, for the most part of having the wrong types, it'll tell us where it is and tell us why. Um, so if you want to refactor, you should, you know, feel confident in the fact that you can add things. If we wanted to add Kelvin, for the most part, we could copy pasta coding and all the spelling mistakes were there and it would work. The compiler would guide you through it. So don't view compiler mistakes as bad. View them as a helpful hand and help you improve this form if you wanted to add, you know, functionality and features to it. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what Elm can provide, gives you excited, and shows you how, although forms are challenging, Elm's strong types make sure that you can ensure it's correct, but you still have to think about your types, as you said with the bug of flipping Boolean flags and the relationships between them. But at least you have very clear of if something worked or it didn't. And from there, you can feel confident in your data transformation and show it to the user. So that's how you do basic forms in Elm. In this case, doing a temperature converter from Fahrenheit to Celsius and back. And again, the source code is on GitHub. I'll link it in the description of YouTube. Thank you for your time and hope that helped.